This is Carl Ackerman, host of Journeys of the Mind, and we are so grateful to have Alberto Fernandez, whose uh, position is the co-owner and operator of Brug LLC. And the reason I say we're lucky is because this is one of the best pastry places and bread makers in the state of Hawaii. And I guess to get us started, uh, because this is called Journeys of the Mind, and we are part of Think Tech Hawaii, um, Alberto, could you please let me know, um, how did you get to Hawaii? Maybe you were born here and things like this, but how did you get to Hawaii? What was your journey in order to get to Honolulu? Hi, thank you very much, Carl. Thanks for having me in your show. We are very happy to be part of this uh, episode of Journeys of the Mind. So I was not born in Hawaii. What a beautiful place. My kids are born in Hawaii, but I was born in Spain, in a small town in the northern part of Spain. And I came to Hawaii with uh, my beautiful wife, Miho. She's from Japan. And we met uh, not in Japan, not in Spain, but we met actually in China. Um, she was already a business owner over there. And I was work studying at a Singapore university while working uh, with the Japanese community, um, in a Japanese company in Shanghai. And then we, we got to meet us both expats on a third country and we moved to Hawaii now it's almost 11 years ago. And and so how did you start operating with Brug? And I assume, I mean, people have told me this, but I've never verified it, that Brug mm -hmm. is a Japanese owned company. It was founded in Hokkaido in 1977. It was a very famous uh, baker from Hokkaido that fell in love with German style of bake, bake goods and pastries. So he moved to Germany to learn everything about German bakery and European bread. And when he moved back to Hokkaido in 1977, he started this bakery that was like the first German bakery of Sapporo. And I think that, that was my understanding of it. It's like um, working in a different way than what traditional Japanese bakeries were making, just with more focus on ampang or custard. He specialized more in rustic bread, artisan bread, uh, rye bread. Um, and um, that started in Hokkaido. And um, 11 years ago, back when the time of the old Shirokia, a lot of uh, listeners will remember the old Shirokia, uh, Brooke took a small space there. And that's where my wife and I came in to play because we came to, firstly, just to help operate, but eventually to buy and relaunch and uh, grow the, the Hawaii enterprise of Brug. But we are still related to Brug uh, Hokkaido. There are three bakeries in Sapporo. Well, I have to say two things. One, you can have your, uh, your baked goods with wonderful beer. Uh, that's number one. Um, and number two, you know, um, I, I'm that's very curious about your wife, uh, because my mm -hmm. uh, one of my uh, closest friends is a Japanese historian named Robert or a historian of, of Japan named mm -hmm. Robert Stratton. And his wife worked in Shirakia and uh, oh. Stratton, and she is also a native of Japan. So this is a, a great coincidence here. So this is absolutely wonderful. So how did you get involved with um, with Brug? Was it through your wife and was it through Shirakia or through my wife? Yes, uh, she. We, we firstly moved in while well, she was pregnant and uh, we just had our newly born son and uh, everybody knows how difficult it is to raise uh, a children, especially when you're in a context where you don't have your, she didn't have her parents or I didn't have my parents. We didn't have anybody to help. We didn't have any uh, close relationship. We eventually had somebody who became our, like our family member, one of the workers, uh, her name was Frances Caina, and uh, I said it was because unfortunately she just passed away a few uh, months ago. But she was our, she was like a, the, the mother of my kids at the beginning when we married, first moved to, to Hawaii, like the grandmother in Hawaii. And we just had to, both of us work like a family owned business where we start with from humble beginnings, um, work from early, very early mornings to late afternoons and one person was not enough to just work so we both had to jump in and and do and somebody will watch the kid and the other one will work then the other one will go home and just work almost non-stop from morning to the evening 
Well, I'm going to talk to you about that work in, in, in just a minute, but how many um, retail stores does Brug now have in Hawaii? So Brug uh, directly owns and operates uh, five locations. They're all five locations in Oahu. And there is a sister company of Brug that is called Mana Sandwiches that we also uh, manage and operate. And uh, all the bread is made fresh by Brug. So you could say that there is a sixth location that has also bread brew made fresh every day. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you specifically about that uh, that fresh bread and what you do because you know unlike normal management teams where you know you see a guy with a tie and you know he disappears and then the workers do the work. When I saw you at the Manoa Brew, which happens to be at a, at a prime location, just wonderful, a lot of uh, foot traffic walking by, I saw you sort of disappear and go to the back, and I assumed you were baking. And um, um, so how does that work? I mean, how does, uh, how does, how do you produce, first of all, what are the ingredients that you need and how do you produce mm. such wonderful um, breads and also pastries, um, you know, from that one shop, uh, just working in that area in the back of Brook? The way Brook works uh, compared to other bakeries that especially bakeries with multiple locations, they usually have a central kitchen. They make their products and deliver. We, every location, it's a, its own bakery. So if you go to Manoa or Kahala or Pearl Ridge, everything is made there fresh from scratch every morning. We have a dedicated group of bakers that just go there, say 4 a.m., but I know they are always there before 4. They start early mornings to just start mixing the dough, make all the pastries fresh from scratch. And it's not just one type of dough, but they... They work, they do almost 20 different types of dough every day because we think that each pastry uh, needs a different type of bread. And bread is not just one generic standard thing. Like there are those subtleties, those fragrance, those aromas, those textures that have to match the flavor profile of what you're trying to build, whether it's a white bread and you want it to just toast it and eat it or you are making bread to, for a sweet pastry or for a savory sausage roll, we believe it, it has to be a different type of bread. So it has to be treated and made separately in different batches. So what goes into that dough, into the separate doughs? What are the ingredients? It's very simple ingredients. There is no magic sauce or secret uh, ingredient. All of our bakers have access to you know, the the books, the recipes, the, we make it there in front of everybody and everybody that learns to work with us will learn how to do it. So there is no specific secret. There is just high quality ingredients. We bring some of our flowers from Japan, from Hokkaido. Uh, other flowers come from the British Columbia. There are just high quality, high protein types of flower that works well to, uh, to match our recipes. I've noticed when I go by the glass area that there's a sign that says, this is the most popular uh, kind of pastry. And actually what it is, is sort of a, it's it's the bread over a sausage. And, Correct. Um, appa- and apparently people just love this. I mean, it's like, you know, God forbid someone compares it to a hot dog because because of the wonderful bread that's being used. Um, but uh, my question to you is, um, is there anything different about that particular bread? And also what kind of sausage is in there? Yes, they both have a um, specialty to it. So the bread is like a Japanese soft milk bread. So it's very pillowy. And the sausage is also Japanese style, but it's made locally. So sort of like the bread is Japanese techniques, but made uh, handmade here in Hawaii. And it's um, also a local vendor that makes uh, this uh, famous Arabiki sausage. And it's very snappy. And the thing is that it has like a thick uh, skin, so it's very juicy inside. And when you bite into it, it has a crunch. And if you add that to a pillowy soft bread that has flavor on itself, it's not just to wrap up the sausage. And you have the sweetness and the spices, and the, it just becomes a very natsukashi, they call the Japanese. It's very mem- it brings you memories of like childhood happiness. Yeah. It's just a nice experience. This brings up a question. I'll get back to the bread because I want to talk about the bread itself in just a moment. But so did you, are you communicating with the uh, uh, corporate heads in Hokkaido, in Japan, in Japanese? I mean, is, is, is your Japanese that good? In, in which case, 
I'm going to bow to you already because I think that's a difficult language to learn. I can speak a little bit of Japanese. I communicate with them when we are in a casual setting in Japanese, like we have dinner and we are just talking about something casual. Yes, but if we are、um, to write a report or anything in Japanese, and I just translate it and I let my, you know, we are a team. It's never just me, it's my wife and I, and we have a big team of people that help us. And so she deals more directly with Hokkaido. Does that mean that you are, do you have to travel to Hokkaido at different times of the year, or is there a central place where you travel to in Japan? Yes,、uh, we go to, we, we are traveling. We are in, actually in close contact with Hokkaido and we plan together and we do things together because, yeah, we are very well connected. I mean, we are in a very good relationship and we are not, sometimes people do the mistake of thinking that Brook is like a franchise. Like we brought in a franchise, we just bought a concept and we are doing it here. And Brook is not. Completely a franchise. So it's not a franchise. We actually developed the concept of what is Brug nowadays. It got into,、uh, like, uh, into Hokkaido. So Hokkaido had the recipes, the way of doing things, but they didn't have a, a color scheme,、um, a, a business、um, operating procedures that we had to follow. But we actually always had the freedom to create ourselves. We just have、uh, this name. These recipes, these fundamentals, this way of doing things. And then from there, we, Hawaii is a very unique、uh, market. So we never try to come here and push down a concept. We just evolve together with the local community, with their flavors, with the tastes, and, and we grow to do what we are doing now, right now. And eventually, we are actually more so changing the Hokkaido or a, a Hokkaido, it's not that we are changing them, but they are also learning from our experience and what works, how there are different ways to, to get、um, maybe higher quality dough in a more effective way or、um, things like that, that we are actually working and developing together. And we go to Hokkaido, and in a few months, the Hokkaido、uh, head baker will be coming also to Hawaii to help us also set and test new recipes. And new ways of working with new machines and new technologies. You know, this, this sounds like, and it's、um, a praise to the Japanese, a very Japanese way of doing things, which is often, you know,、um, you know very、uh, adept and very,、um, very thoughtful about the consumer. And just to give you an aside, you know, for Japanese car companies, it was explained to me by a, a friend of mine who、um, uh, owns a large share in the Toyota company. Um, here in Hawaii.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, it was explained to me that,、um, that if something goes wrong at, at a GM plant or a Ford plant,、um, they'll remove the car and work on the car.、Um, but in Japan, they'll shut down the entire、um, assembly line and figure how things、mm-hmm. are working. So it's, a, it's kind of a different、um, and more holistic、um, view of,、uh, of a corporate life and things like this. And、uh, your emphasis on the team. And I also want to mention. The, probably the best known baked goods、um, in Hawaii are, the,、uh, are Zippy's, the Polian's bakery. But as you mentioned, it's one bakery that then ships out things. And of course, the disadvantage、right. to that, I mean, not that, you know, they taste good too, but the disadvantage to that is it's not baked on site,、uh, which, you know, you have to package things and get them to the place. So let's return to the bread. So, you know, you, what, you know what types of breads do you make? And why did you pick、uh, that type of bread? I'm particularly interested in your raisin bread、uh, because、mm-hmm. raisin bread is so, I mean, you don't have to put anything on that raisin bread. It's delicious. And my wife sometimes buys several loaves and puts it in the freezer and brings it back out and eats parts of it. I'll give you the secret, Cordy.、Um, Hokkaido is very well known in Japan for the high quality of their dairy. And dairy in Hokkaido has a very high fat content that m a k e it also nutritious. It's very rich, it's very creamy, it's very silky.、Uh, we cannot achieve the same level of silkiness and milk fragrance in the raisin bread with 
uh, milk that we can just purchase over the supermarket. So we make it with uh, a lot of half and half. So half and half, it has 50% cream and um, on, on and 50% milk. And it's a lot more rich. It's more intense. Of course, it's more expensive for us as a cost, as ingredient, than just um, a watered-down milk. Because most of the time, you wouldn't even use just milk. You would even put milk and water. Um, or just a powder milk. But we, we do use uh, a substantial amount of um, half and half. And we also use um, Hokkaido imported flour that has a very high percentage of protein. And the mixing process is, is key. It's an artisanal process that uh, is timed by even minutes and seconds. We check the temperature of the dough to try to bulletproof the fermentation. Um, we, it's a, we, we, we check very well the tension of the dough before we added the, the butter to make sure that it won't, like everything will reach to the high, the correct point because um, our doughs have very high point of hydration. I know that's very technical and most of people don't know what that means, but what it means is if, if you add a lot of water or liquid to a dough, it's going to be very sticky and difficult to work with. And it's going to make the bread very soft, very moist, very delicious without having to add softness or artificial products. So people want to make it uh, easy, fast, so anybody can work a recipe. So you make a dough with no, low hydration. Then everything is simple or you can put it in a machine. When you have a bread that is so delicate, just somebody with a lot of experience and with, uh, will know how to manipulate and make it on point every day. Otherwise, one day it will look good. Next day, it's going to look like collapse. Next day, it's going to look not good. It's not going to prove to the right size. That's the, that's the secret of the racing bread. And, and what other breads do you have? And why did you pick those sort of breads? You know, like I think you... Have, I don't know if you, if I remember right, matcha bread or, but you have different um, types of bread. And why did you pick those particular uh, types of bread? We pick the breads, but we have also learned to listen to the customer. So it's not just so much what we pick, but also what our customer ask, and what are the needs for for the for the market. And they're like those matcha breads that you had mentioned, maybe from the Manoa location. That's a store special that one you will only find it at manoa and that was that came it was a recipe from the baker and one of the reasons we we have that is so uh when you hire very passionate people that really love baking that have a lot of experience they don't want to go into an abc factory setup where you tell them what to do and they become robots they want to experiment. They want to make something that the customer is surprised and happy with. So we make new breads. We, I think about 10 to 20% of our recipes are always rotating. We have some core breads. But we let the baker produce something that is going to really inspire them. They are going to feel happy about that. And if the customer likes it and they come back for it, then we make it a, a product for all locations. And that's how we choose which breads to bake. Not just us, not just the baker, not just the customer, but a work within all of us. That's fascinating. So is there a different type of both pastry and bread between the Manoa store and, for example, the store you have in the food court at Ala Moana? Yes, yes. For example, the matcha bread you mentioned, that's a Manoa special. And we have a blueberry and cream cheese bread in Alamo Anada. We don't have it in Manoa. And Cajala makes a very artisanal, very good sourdough bread because also the type of customer that live around Cajala, they were more no nostalgic of something more earthy and crafted and something more like a German, something more. But in Pearl Ridge, we also make a sourdough but it's softer, it's more pillowy. It's, it's a different type of it, a different type of bread. It's not so rustic. Um, and um, yeah, each location has its own specialties. Okay, um, so 
you know, the, the sourdough bread in Kahala, that, you know, I love sourdough bread. And maybe because, you know, my ancestors came from Germany with a name like Carl Ackerman, of course, Carl Ackerman. Um, so the point is that, um, that, that sourdough bread I will, I will look for in Kahala, but it's, you know, I never would have known um, that there are different specialties. Now, why the cream cheese and blueberry um, at, uh, at, uh, at Ala Moana? Yes, that one, it came from our um, head baker, uh, Toyama-san, Toyama-sensei. Or, uh, she, she is from Hokkaido. She was the apprentice of the founder of Brug, and she has been also with us from the very beginning, from the Shirokia days. And she likes sweet bread. She's a baker to the heart, and she likes soft bread. She likes pillowy texture, and she likes them sweet. And she likes them with a punch into it. She doesn't like it to be too soft, right? She likes something that people take a bite and it's like, wow, this is delicious. Um, and and then she she created a recipe. We did had a... Uh, a bread in the past that it was like a blueberry and cream cheese uh, dry case that it was kind of like a French toast but with those ingredients but that was not a bread that we could make every day so she want she created the loaf of bread with the flavors of that pastry that everybody liked so combining both of them um, she came up with that recipe that's absolutely wonderful I mean that's a uh... That's a great story. So um, how about that? I mean, is there a, like a head baker? I mean, uh, uh, you kind of alluded to her uh, like that, but I mean, is there someone who really kind of calls the shots in terms of ingredients, um, at least to the ones that are sort of at most group stores? Yes. Um, that head baker um, is in, as I mentioned, she's from Hokkaido. She's in close touch with the uh, Hokkaido also like top um baker and they communicate when there is like a new ingredients or new trends or they have a contact of a farmer in Tochigi or in a small town that makes outstanding azuki beans and suddenly we are granted the opportunity to buy that azuki bean and be able to import it to Hawaii. So she she brings it, in, we, we price it um, if, it, if it makes sense uh, holistically we taste it and we utilize it. She, we, we explore, but we make the decision together. It has to be a little bit of a team effort. She does a scout for always ingredients and new breads and new recipes. Okay, so I'm going to ask kind of a, a, a question that, that you've inspired for me today. How does that high Hokkaido flour, um, of course, it's probably flown in, um, well, uh, unless, it's, uh, unless it can last a long time and it's shipped in, um, how mm-hmm. does it get to your store? I mean, let's say the Manoa store, for example. How does that flour get there? Because uh, that's just that's beyond my belief. Unless they make a Hokkaido flour here in Hawaii. No, it comes from Ebetsu, Japan. It's a it's called a Ebetsu flour mill. Um, any listener could um, find it. That factory has um, so the the recipe blend is kind of a patented uh, flour that uh, is a mix of different crops, including 7% rice, 70% uh, wheat. And that is a certain ingredient. And they have their recipe. They mill it for us. And they said we work with a broker. And that broker is constantly bringing ingredients from Japan to Hawaii. And, and we are able to pull it with a bigger shipment of other ingredients for other food or other things that come from Japan to Hawaii. Well, let's talk about the, some of the pastries, too. You know, you have pastries that look like pizza that are absolutely delicious. They have the same sort of toppings that a pizza would have. You also have, you know, wonderful creams inside your pastries, uh, probably some of the best creams I've ever tasted in Hawaii. And you also have, um, you know, uh, 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 pastries that look like like uh, animals of some sort or you know, the, like, that, are, that are drawn like that. Why don't you talk about that for a little bit? Because that's really a marvelous part of Brook. We make the effort uh, of producing every day around 100 different types of pastries. Uh, most of locations, they are different. Uh, they, there are some uh, like collections of pastries, like the ones you mentioned, for example, they look like a pizza for us. We call it the, the focaccia bread. 
and we use uh, that same uh, focaccia dough and we make a series of products. So we make the tomato and pesto focaccia and we have another kitaguni. Kitaguni in Japanese means the northern way. And by that we want to express is the, the way of the north is ho making reference to Hokkaido, Hokkaido farmers. We try to put the ingredients that a farmer would grow in Hokkaido. It will have tomatoes, it will have corn, it will have um, um, zucchinis. And then we make our own um, paste. So we just, we make a, a paste with black olives and Parmesan cheese. So we have that kind of Italian taste of focaccia, then with also a very Mediterranean sauce that is also made in house. And then we do the toppings with a Northern way or Kitaguni, and that's a vegetarian focaccia. Then we have the, the one that looks more like a pizza, so like a, the one with a pepperoni, we have a pepperoni focaccia. Or for people that don't eat pork, we also have a pastrami focaccia with onions. And, um, so we, out of that bread, we make like a five or six product. Then we have the sweet ones uh, that are uh, different feelings. The ones you mentioned with uh, very cute animal faces. Uh, kids and adults like it. I think a lot of adults buy it with excuse of for their kids, but it's for them. And it uh, <laughs> looks like a bear. Uh, our most iconic pastry maybe looks like a bear. Bears are also found in Hokkaido. So it's a cute uh Kuma, we call it kuma. Kuma means a bear in Japanese, so kuma chocolate custard. And we make all also our own fillings of custard in the store. So every day after the bread is done, and before we clean up, we produce um, some of the fillings that, and that is going to go in the toppings for next day's pastries. Are you um, intentionally, or maybe this is not the case, um, targeting your stores at high end audiences? And because the only reason I ask that is because. You know, three of the stores we've identified, one's in Kahala and one's in Manoa. Uh, both are, 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 you know, sort of uh, middle class to upper middle class clientele. And is, is that intentional mm -hmm. or is it just the, the, the places that you can get into and that offer a, a good foot traffic? Uh, definitely, we think the pastries are for everyone, right? And we actually benefit the most when... Um, when, when, when people don't want to spend a lot of money and they just want to have a quick, healthy meal at the, at the supermarket, uh, you know, at the, at the mall, I think we are a very competitive option. Once because, one, because it's healthy. Secondly, because it's made fresh there from scratch. And third, because it's just delicious and it will make you, it will fill you, it will satisfy you. It's not so much a question of, lower or upper medial class as it is a question of valuing uh, Japanese artisanal products as a, this is made differently. This is not the same. So I think it's something more regarding to how uh, the perception of, of Japanese artisan handmade products. If you go to maybe right now, Brooke has an established a more recognition and reputation and people know what it is. But at the beginning, when um, people didn't know anything about Brooke and there is already a local bakery, uh, not everybody knew that, oh, why would it be maybe 50 cents more expensive or 25 cents more expensive? Or you can have a, a dozen donuts in some other place for $3. And it's like, a, well, this is not what we are trying to target. This is not what we're trying to do. This is not what we're doing. This is an artisanal product, handmade from scratch with imported ingredients by specialized bakers. So it was more so that those neighborhoods uh, kind of requested more that type of product rather than uh, monetary. Because honestly, people drive from everywhere on all neighborhoods. and. That we have a location in Pearl Ridge that might not be perceived as a as a high end compared to Kahala. However, that customer travels a lot. They are very well educated. They know a lot about food. So we are very uh, well recognized among those people because they they know good food. And local people in Hawaii, I think they know better high quality food because we have influence from all over the world rather than maybe some places in, in other parts of the continent and on the mainland, they might not appreciate 
to handmade food the same way that we do it in Hawaii, regardless of the income. Are there, are there plans to go to the continent or are you already there? Um... We are not there yet. Uh, we would like to do it, but we also don't want to uh, grow in a disorganized way at the expense of quality and at the expense of ourselves. Um, when we try to uh, do it with the standards, with the values, with the philosophy, and we would like to go, but for that to happen, I think we have to uh, unlock new technologies that will facilitate uh, producing at the quality that is expected of proof, but uh, with a different management system of how to operate the stores. Because right now, having a dedicated uh, team of Japanese bakers, because a lot of our bakers are from Japan, have them in California or New York or Texas, it would be it would be impossible to to guarantee that that's brew and not just one more bakery. That's wonderful. And I'm going to leave you with the last word. If you could put on your screen um, a picture of the of, of, of a brew store on the back of your, sure. you know, and you could just describe it for a little bit. Yeah, that, that's, I think it's a good way to sort of conclude our show. So this is, for example, one of our brew locations. Um, you can see that there is a lot of wood because uh, we are definitely inspired by nature. And it gives you a warm feeling. Uh, Hokkaido is a very cold place. It's the northernmost island of Japan. So once you go inside of a bakery, you want to feel that warm. You want to feel the smells, that everything has been cooked there. But you also want to feel the nature. You also want to feel like something is done um, with love. And that's why we choose uh, wood as the, one of the main design elements. We have uh, some pictures in the background as well. I think the first one is the founder, is uh, Takemura-san. We have them in all of our locations. And uh, for, for us, it's very important to, to have him there because it represents, uh, it connects us with the past. Uh, it kind of, uh, we don't try to bring a, you know, a religious aspect to it, but it kind of feels like a, we you know, a little bit of he's watching what we are doing and we are making, we're working uh, with respect to what he created and what he envisioned. And you can also see the logo and our letters that now are very well recognized and all the shelves with the pastries. Hopefully like it's all made uh, fresh every morning. We keep on delivering new, a new tray of fresh products, uh, sausage roll or focaccias or whatever it is. We make small batches. Uh, so it sells out quickly and then we go to the back and come up with a new batch and hopefully we can do it a few times a day. And by the end of the day, hopefully there is no leftover because we don't keep anything for next day and it will be a waste. Uh, it's been so nice to have um, Mr. Alberto Fernandez's um, dream here uh, with Brug. And the reason I mentioned the dream is I want to end with a to honor uh, Mr. Fernandez, from a quote from a fellow countryman, but several centuries back, a man by the name of Calderón de la Barca, and he said, La vida es sueño y los sueños sueños son. Life is a dream, and the dreams, the dreams they are. And this apparently is your golden dream, which is doing so well. Uh, we would like to thank you very much for spending time with us on behalf of all of ThinkTech Hawaii and Anahuiho.